Um, and I'd like to thank you all for uh, gathering here um, with us today, uh, panel members. Shall I name you again? I feel like you've been named once already, <laughs> twice too much. Um, I, maybe I'll just talk about the composition, how uh, you came, how, um, how this came to be. And uh, we, uh, this, this gathering of panel members was also activated by the supplemental. Uh, I initially invited three practitioners from the expanded field of jewellery and then asked them to invite along one other panel member. And this line of approach was highly effective. Although, in addition, I thought it might be of interest to round out the conversation with artists who congregate around differing mediums, yet share complementary interests or methods. This approach also proved very effective. And so I thank you all for being with us today. Our question for today is, what do you think of when I say the word jewellery? And today's workshop is tasked with the effect of curiosity and exploration. We'll endeavour to trouble this question and map its provocation through action and conversation, along with accessorial invention as it may arise. With this question, I'm really asking how is it we approach our thinking doing, doing thinking of jewellery process and practice. In order to work through this proposition, we're going to take a slightly different approach to the object-oriented, subject-centred discourse, generally favoured by <coughs> contemporary jewellery. I recommend we avail ourselves with what Jane Bennett describes as a patient sensory attentiveness to explore differing means through which alliances of matter may activate amidst the becoming of ourselves, each other, and the supplemental effects of things. For today's workshop, I'm interested in poising process and practice of jewellery as ornamental event, where the doing of jewellery is approached as emergent assemblage of multiple bodies and forces. By bodies, I'm referring to the vibrant material agency of all bodies, inexplicable bodies that may be perceived as human, as more than or not quite human bodies. By forces, I'm referring to Bennett's notion of quasi-agents that act with trajectories, propensities, or tendencies of their own, the directives of which we may or may not be able to quite put a finger on. When talking about material agency, it's easy to lose touch or lessen the effect by endeavouring to tie down the meaning of affect with words. So I propose we mobilise ourselves. And in preparation for this workshop, I've uh, proposed three makeshift, easy-do actions, which we're all going to participate in, if <laughs> you're willing and able. Uh, and um, each, each of these actions create some abstract, under-acknowledged or superficial expression of ornamentation through which we may make sense or nonsense of my provocation. I would like to offer you a warning. Things may get messy. Definitions may begin to slip. And you may have to improvise. If, you're sen if you sense you're becoming too precious, or observe when becoming isn't precious enough, consider this an effect of the workshop working. I'll just briefly run through the actions. I might stand to do this mobilise myself. 
So out in the forecourt, we'll play with the porosity of toroidal vortexes. Sounds very scientific, doesn't it? <laughs> in making smoke rings. Uh, as best you can, can you please keep these flighty characters outside the building, <laughs> as there are smoke detectors operating in our midst. And it also may be self-evident, but please try to avoid touching the live incense ember. In the middle uh, area of the gallery, we, you're invited to enact the shadow casting brooch brooch technique. Here you may observe a subtle flattening of people and thing materialities. Your efforts to brooch and simultaneously index a brooch may be traced on the screen of your smartphone. So switch it to um, camera and you'll be able to you're, you're welcome to share uh, any uh, trace that you produce with, a, with the hashtag MyShadowWears. Ideally, this action would have been held um, you know, outside in a peripatetic fashion, walking around, wandering, making in collaboration with the sun and in co cooperation with vibrant matter that we generally think of as detritus or rubbish on the ground. Unfortunately, I've observed in scheduled public events such as this that the sun is an unreliable collaborator. <laughs> so with the assistance of Kerry, uh, our silhouette meister, <laughs> we'll replicate the solar rays uh, with a uh, handheld um, spotlight and the plastic toys sub for the congealing of lively matter that otherwise assemble in public space. So you're welcome to kind of move the toys out, arrange them in whatever configuration you like and cast a silhouette in relation to them as an ornamental act. Um, so... Uh, and any questions you can ask Kerry, um, or there'll be other, other assistants lurking around. Uh, the third action is in the south corner, uh, just on the bridge, so you head south and just out into the middle, towards the lifts, um, is where the sonic necklace is located. Uh, Linda will be accessorising the effects of the sonic necklace. Uh, if you have any issues with hearing loss, I would suggest that you don't do the sonic necklace. Um, but uh, otherwise, um, we've got about 20 minutes to circulate through these actions. And I'm going to kind of propose that we more or less divide up into thirds and rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. So that means sort of moving around that kind of configuration. But I think you're all adult enough to kind of figure out the flow and whether you're willing to step in and out of certain things. So we'll see how we progress. But they're very uh, makeshift and easy do. So the effort is fairly light and playful. Um, so I'm going to suggest that sort of this third head out with me towards the, um, the smoke ring making and that this third here head over to Sonic Necklace and then the remainder to um, join Kerry. So uh, probably take your smartphones with you if you would like to uh, enact that action. Smoke ringers, follow me. Do we get it? Catch it? Can you see it? Come in, catch it. If you get up against the black, you'll actually see the um, 
the toroidal vortex. It spirals that way and that way within the smoke ring. So come up, grab, have a go. I'll do it one more time. You have a go, Ben. Where's the bottle? Oh, yeah. Is that all working out now? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think I've got it. So um, we've got a few minutes to kill now <laughs> in conversation. And I'm happy to have that conversation opened up by questions from the audience or reflections. Uh, and I guess the first quest well, we, we return to the question of uh, what do you think of when I say the word jewellery? Um, any, any reflections coming through about that after experiencing? You're nodding your head. I am. I'm nodding my head. and encouraging. I'm, and I'm kind of grinning gormlessly as well. <gasps> and I feel like what, and I wasn't expecting this answer, but what you've instantly reconnected me to is childhood dress-ups. Mm. And that sense of being able to f scavenge and grab and I'm, you know, seeing myself in front of a kitchen cupboard, having pulled everything out of that cupboard and popping a saucepan on my head mm. and, you know, th that, that sort of impulse to, to um, yeah, to make mm. oneself over in that way. Wow. Mm. And just to give context, you come from a theatre background and uh, as a playwright. Yes. And I can tell you're wearing a very fine sash today would you like to would you like to just kind of yes like to, yes uh, I, I like to kind of do a bit of this when mm. I wear it mm. um just because I think it actually shows <laughs> the lines of it and the craftspersonship of it um to greater effect this this is uh, one of a series of pieces that I've had made for myself I've bestowed upon myself um, and this was one of the first that was made um, at the very beginning of my own PhD journey. And in some ways, it's kind of the impetus that propelled me from my, my other life or my former life um, as a superannuated playwright into the thing that I am now becoming, which is some other kind of... Unfunded, art, unfunded, <laughs> but otherwise excellent practitioner in many fields. So, yeah, it's... Um, but I, I think that... Um, the, the the prop the object the the material thing is and the and the kind of structures and bones beneath those have, are really integral to my practice and particularly were as a theatre maker. And do you kind of now um, approach that as a kind of an assemblage of all those sort of interrelating interconnected? Yes. Parts? Yes, I do. I do. I feel very much like I've been I've been released in in fact from quite the quite tight confines of the theatrical practice into something that is much more playful 
and yes, much more inclined to the the bricolage, um, the the DIY impulse. Mm. 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 I I kind of like the the way you describe the the actual um, the playfulness, and I think that there's it's really interesting this idea that or the possibility for like a, a um, a multitude of interpretations. I mean, it's almost like this. The, the I think, in a way, this this idea of uh, of the freedom to you know, it's not misinterpreting because there's not a strict interpretation as to how like um you know like an object should be kind of engaged with or how people should engage with each other based on the objects they're wearing or you know. So I, I think it's 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 a opens up and also the this idea of scripting, I guess, like the expanded stage. What, what is the choreography of, um, of, you know, the expanded theatre of life? If we're all performing our identities, like, you know, what are the kind of things that we use to do that? I don't know, I think it's very interesting. Mm. But, uh, anyway, so yeah. I thought I'd just throw that in there mm -hmm. as a... Mm -hmm. I think responding to what um, you were doing over here, Kerry, um, that open potential of that exercise is what was really exciting to me. This idea that some people might go in and see it as being dressed by the things in the space or their shadow being dressed and others perhaps interpreting it as a dressing of the space. Um, and I can see what you were talking about, Roseanne, with when this would happen in perhaps a less controlled environment, the different ways that um, you may be able to have this interconnectedness with these quite raw elements, that playful engagement and raw potentiality of the world around you. Um, and I think that's what I really became excited about oh, with great. that in particular. Yeah, great. Yeah, I first um, enacted that process um, in uh, a stopover um, in Barcelona and I had been on a residency there before but on this particular trip um, I was kind of almost thrown onto the street by my host and I, I wasn't lost but I was feeling kind of disoriented and I had a practice of um, already of working with the matter that I found, the things that I was found and was led by that quest of, you know, to kind of the preciousness of um, a something or whatever. It didn't, re you know, the compulsion to kind of connect and collect through um, what was left behind by others effectively. But it was just happened that the sun was at a particular angle and intensity and that sense of um, disorientation was, uh, I guess, remediated through that process, and I, I I just wandered, like the you know, situationist. De de I can never say that word. De 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 yeah, thank mm. you. Um, I, you know, I spent three or four days just doing that and finding the city through that experience and feeling a different sense of presence, I suppose, of kind of becoming with that city than, than had I have approached it through um, map and logbook of tourist events that I should be getting to. So, yeah. Mm. So documenting each shadow became more about fixing yourself in a particular moment in a particular place within the city? Uh, not so much that, but in fact, I sort of started to... The, 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 the me of me was and the it of that uh, were less, uh, you know, it was less, they both sort of dropped away. And it was through that kind of melding, I suppose, that, um, that this process started to affect me um, in, in, a, in an ornamentation kind of sense. I don't know um, if I've expressed that quite right, but that's okay. Mm. Well, it's interesting this because you mentioned before the the flattening that the uh, mobile device also does. It's like, an, a, 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 what are some of your thoughts on how that, you know, the additional kind of um, well, I mean, I was mentioning in another one of these sessions the the, the portable phone or the um, the kind of uh, the smartphone as a, as an extension of jewelry in a way. But uh, what are your thoughts on how how that relationship of the um, of the freezing of that moment into a well I think that's it's kind of necessary in a way it's the kind of uh, it's where the abstraction is 
performed, but it's recirculated through other, the other social uh, platforms. But I actually, uh, I'm in two minds about the flattening. That was a sort of an abbreviation, really, of trying to sort of talk about less vertical okay. relations. And so um, that, in a sense, it's a flattening, but at the same time, it's a, it's a, it's a circulation or it's a reconfiguration that, that um, you know, that are, you know, continues to um, perform in different ways. So I've actually reconfigured it, those images as a kind of a performative mapping document that I don't have here today, but I had at the, my examination, yeah. Thinking of um, just thinking of that, the flattening. Uh, thinking of it as a hierarchical flattening, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and having to, you know wearing the object that you find, and there's this like you're not picking up the object and you're not placing it on your body. You're negotiating your body and the object mm. into relation, and it's not mm. even your body you're negotiating. Mm. You're negotiating the shadow mm. effect. Mm. So you bring these two things into relation. Mm. That and and you know they're both playing a role in how you can potentially orientate yourself. Uh, the image, or mm. how, how that image gets constructed. Mm. Yeah, and it's even hard for me to talk about it because mm. I immediately put in my body in the hierarchy of the thing that mm. mobilises the mm. other device, mm. yeah, the other th mm. the other things in the world. But mm. it's not that at all. The body's being like you know, and Kerry's body was mobilising my body in particular ways. Mm. But when I mm. didn't feel particularly in control mm. of that, it was more mm. like trying to dance into a relationship. Mm. Mm. And I've used that as um, kind of a prompt to think about how, how, we, how we form these relationships, or how, do these, how did this relationship even ever begin? Mm. And I um, led a walk, which I based on what I called a paleo fantasy, where we reimagined that moment before jewellery. And we worked with, we went into a stark covered area, which I called the Blombos Cave, and we shadow cast in, which was basically a dirty laneway covered with scaffolding, but we imagined it as the kind of prehistory, where possibly we're actually more half ape, you know, we're not quite, we're, we're, you know, we're not, we're not kind of quite human, uh, or mm. when are we quite human? Mm. Um, possibly. Um, who knows? I'm welcome. I'm open. I'm open to that speculation. Uh, where and yes, and so we we worked with the spotlight, existing artificial light, and then we tried to do it with the sun at the <laughs> peak of the hill, if it would show up and shine, and then we would be realised as as human. <laughs> Quite a fun <laughs> fantasy. Um, hmm, I've, enough about me. I kind of feel like I want to draw some other kind of practice experiences out. And I'm looking at you, Renee, um, in part because of your interest in activating continuous life cycles within mm. the kind of inver urban environment through practices. Mm. Yeah, well, I guess um, I don't know how many people know what my practice involves, but I'm just going to assume, otherwise it'll end up being an artist talk. But the thing that I enjoy is where the artefact isn't present, um, where the jewellery gesture becomes dominant, and the material that I was particularly interested in using in recent times is actually ferric oxide, which is um, rouge, so it's rust that emerges on the surface of the decaying city. You can also deploy that material back onto that same surface to reinvigorate it. Um, and I do a lot of things where I collect that and I work with that rust on the surface of gallery walls. So that material for me operates functionally as a polishing material. It reveals a particular kind of sense of decay and state of the city. It op offers a kind of pictorial manifestation in the gallery and sort of forms large abstract works. And all of these actions, for me, reflect 
fundamentally what exists in my jewellery practice, but there are no artefacts. And I think, and you know, for many years have thought where the artefact is not, jewellery is at, at its strongest. So when Linda was um, doing the sonic necklace, the intimacy of jewellery was so strong and the intimacy of um, commissioning, perhaps, because I went off script, um, <laughs> Good. Was, Good. was phenomenal and said something far more powerful to me than perhaps an artefact might have. I'm really interested to see how other people found, mm. you know, the other stations and what those sorts of non... Um, object manifestations kind of offered them in terms of understandings. How was it for you, Linda? Because you did what I, I, I haven't experienced what you've just experienced. Mm. I've only, um, mm. Mm, I'm curious to know. Because you sort of set the instructions and we mm. have, we've done a demonstration, we've done it to each other mm. as an experiment. Mm. But I felt like it was, I felt like I was lining up in some sort of ritual, like, I mean, ex-Catholicism sort of situation here where it was a sacrament mm -hmm. and there was a ritual that was occurring. But what was interesting was there was not a structure in the way people were waiting. So people were held back and who would come forward. So there was kind of these really interesting spatial relationships that were occurring, mm -hmm. but then um, a ritual in stepping forward and kind of receiving and then asking for variations. Um, oh, there were variations. Which were f fantastic ah, to... Ah, good. Very... To I receive a, as a giver. Co-elaboration. Absolutely. That's, yeah, great. Who, who co-elaborated? Who... who um, oh, Vicky, great. Yeah. Can we hear from Vicky? Mm. It's great. Um, uh, Sorry, what was your name, Kerry? No, Linda. Linda went round the back because Renee and I were chatting and we thought it's not quite a necklace if it's just at the front. <laughs> so the, the sonic off. necklace went right round the, the neck and head. Wow. Yeah, no, it was fun. Mm. Yeah, very playful. Mm. But there was this really, I, I felt like a duty of care. There was a sense of care and that intimacy that you're talking about. It wasn't mm. until I was then, it was a repeated um, gesture that mm. I realised... Um, how loud um, the experience was mm. for um, mm. the receiver mm. or the wearer. Mm. 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 I think the sensory element of what you've presented <laughs> to us is... Oh, there. Who <laughs> 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 everyone? Who speaks? <laughs> But I think the sensory experience of these is, um, has been quite exciting because of what you're saying, the intimacy of the sound and the proximity of it, but also the smoke rings. It, uh, I don't know how other people felt about it, but it wasn't just the seeing of the smoke, it was um, the diffusion of the scent once it broke as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did, how did you find that? Um, well, I guess I've just been thinking about all the different ways we're experiencing jewellery today and bringing back to your question, Roseanne, you mm. know, what do you think of mm. um, with this word? Mm. I guess it also opens up, you know, that age-old question, what is it? Mm. What is art? What is jewellery? Mm. What are these mm. things? Um, and I guess I've been thinking about what it means to me. Um, and I, I think it encompasses all these things. I mean, we've experienced them, but for my own practice, I always think, come back to the body. Um, and very interested in artefacts in the opposite sense of Renee, but um, not always on the body, but mm. artefacts that suggest that interaction. So when you look at something and you think, oh, I could put that onto my body in some way, um, is more the way that I approach it from a personal perspective. Mm. And then also looking at the materials and what they suggest or can afford for the mm. body, mm. what kind of flexibility and materiality. Mm. So very different sort of sense, I suppose. Mm. And do you feel a duty of care with those materials as well? Always. How How do you kind of approach that or how's that for you, um, your process? I always think they, you know, the classic thought of that they're going to tell me mm. what they want to do, but um, I need to play a long time before I can find the way that they 
they really want to respond because sometimes you'll you have an idea and they'll say no. Mm. <laughs> so it's really about finding that relationship, a close relationship, intimacy mm. with a material that's going to be suggestive of the body. Mm. I'm, I'm recalling a work of yours in the Conaghan Gallery in Brunswick mm. and it was a floor piece and it was like a, um, I can't think of the word, but a torso with, a, I don't want to say dismembered, I just can't think of the <laughs> term. A but costume. It was a costume. Yes. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Because I read it as a torso. Ah. Um, but a costume. So um, it was wearable or was it... I'm thinking it was the black uh, ah. sort of clothing that I wore for a performative piece that ah, I did at right. Coonahan, mm. um, which was more about text at that stage. Of my, ah. um, so I had badges on the outfit ah. that had knee or ankle or whatever the piece was and I walked around the audience inviting people to take a badge from Mm -hmm. the body Mm -hmm. and then to reposition that onto their Mm -hmm. body so breaking my own female body down by through text in the Mm -hmm. space but then also asking people to think about their relationship to those body parts Mm -hmm. and uh, how they would wear Mm -hmm. my knee Mm -hmm. (laughs) etc I wore your belly on my pregnant belly (laughs) (laughs) that's lovely Mm -hmm. and if you work with your body Mm. as a material effectively would Mm. would you be able to tell us a little bit more about how you kind of use this your skin um i'm kind of thinking of your blister ring which always i've loved and Mm. kind of been disturbed by the the abject nature of it. I guess I found this experience quite interesting in that I kind of come from a position of a warm body, so looking at the way the body kind of ages and changes and adds to its narrative over time, as well as trying to position it from a personal narrative of when where that fits in the broader scheme of things. So I entered the exercises from a personal kind of insular viewpoint, thinking, oh, I can't do this one because of asthma and I can't do this one because of tintinitis mm. so I felt a little bit on the periphery mm. but I really enjoyed the you know the shadow piece mm. so that was um that was interesting for mm. me yeah mm. but the yeah the blistering piece is a, is an extension of that kind of worn body that idea of trying to look at people's personal experience and bringing it back and experiencing it through my own body. Mm. Yeah. And, and a blister is quite a common experience for lots of people. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did, was there a particular artefact that, or accoutrement that assisted you in that act? Uh, I don't know what you call them, so for some it's a... It's what sort of, what's the aid in that? Um, the aid is always the idea, so the idea always comes first. So basically I just got really annoyed with people asking me when my partner and I were going to get married. Ah. That's where it came from. And so then I started looking at, you know, the fragility of relationships and how best to represent the fragility of relationships and a blister seemed kind of the optimal way Mm. Mm. in that a blister is quite strong. It's about not breaking the surface of the skin, it's about the skin healing, but then once it's broken, it's exposed Mm -hmm. and it's raw. Mm. Mm. So it's on the wedding finger for a reason. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But it didn't scar, interestingly. No, it didn't scar. Mm. No, I get, um, as I said to you, I get worse blisters on my feet from just wearing shoes. <laughs> so I'm wearing tights so you don't see all the ones from my Birkenstocks on the top of my feet. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that's part of it as well. It's that personal mm. narrative. I have extremely sensitive skin. Mm. So a lot of pieces I've made previously have involved my skin and its sensitivity. Mm. But I'm really fascinated with that idea of once the skin is broken, how it is exposed to infection and... Um, so it's a permeable... It is. It's, it's surface and, and, it, and it has such live and cultural kind of connotations as well in that once that layer is broken, you know, it's, um, it's a different narrative. Mm. But nonetheless, performative... Ornament, you know, it's a performative ornamentation. That's. Uh... Well, I guess my my biggest fear, actually, making that 
piece was that it was going to pop before I got to my photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to have to, you know, make it and make it again. Do all those experiments <laughs> and then have to do it again. Yeah. 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 Is it possible to ask a tricky question that might be related to that? Is that, that, um, that in, I'm just thinking the assembled body of jewellers, like if what is jewellery? Is it made by jewellers? What is the... Because in, there's an interesting thing that's going on here, it seems to be going on here, like over the sequence of these, these talks, these presentations, is this, this... And I'm sort of relating it to the metaphor of, you know, the skin of the, um, of the jewellery profession or, um, or the kind of... The idea of what institutional kind of um, boundary is sort of... Uh, you know, and what, what kind of... You know, what would constitute a, um, a breaking of that threshold or that kind of uh, and you know in terms of an, a rupture to the what is understood to be jewelry and and how and because I think that's actually or maybe I should also say like I found this on the uh, on the side of the road and it's actually one of these things that sort of you know that you'd have at a nightclub yeah it's f and, I, and I feel like I'm a boundary item that sort of <laughs> somehow is playfully pl playfully kind of uh, you know on that zone of being, you know, not really in or not really out, but I'm um, interested in that question. So that's why I'm asking the question in a way. But uh, I don't know if it, have, have I overstepped the line, or am I, am I at the start I of the hope line? So. I've, 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 I, I, is it? Is that? Is, Someone's got to. Was that a good tune? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's only from where you sit. Yeah. That there's ins and outs. Right. Which is, and I which think is that's what this series of workshops really opened up. Yeah, that. which I think is a really good thing. And I, so I part, partly wanted to articulate that that, that is that's the, the. And thank you for doing yeah. it. <laughs> cool. Scott, I want to bring you into the conversation yes. because you uh, did a work at ACCA, bringing the outside in, as you are <laughs> gesturing now, a kind of a solar experiment. Uh, yes, I, um, uh, if you know the uh, Australian Centre for Contemporary Art, um, it's a very closed building uh, with um, very large halls where they display the art and a bit of a foyer which feels a bit like a nightclub sometimes, entering that. And uh, few, no windows into the, into the um, display space really and very few windows into the foyer space. And uh, so I did a work that was kind of played with that um, and you know, we talked about this yesterday, and you mentioned the, uh, this thought that maybe I was adorning the building, that the building had somehow been um, uh, broached or, um, or uh, adorned with uh, this light work. So there, there was mirrors on the, on the, around the edge of the rooftop that shined light through the openings in the facade, uh, through the foyer space to the back space of the gallery, so the light path. Um, went all the way through. And, um, yeah, I mean, broached, this and word broached, I mean, the, the, bu the building itself was broached in that it was, you know, punctured and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, approached and uh, uh, challenged, I guess, yeah. Mm. Mm. And what do you think of that affinity with with jewellery, does it make sense to you or does it add to the kind of yeah, I, gesture or how did it, did it prompt you I to think, think about when it? You, when you ask the question, what do you think of when you think of jewellery, I, I think I don't think of the stuff that we just did, yeah, and this is my failing in not thinking of these things, yeah, so, so unless I'm talking to you, Roseanne, I don't think <laughs> of my work as, of that work as jewellery, yeah, but of course in conversation with you, I can think of it that way. Mm. Uh, so the, you know, there's something particularly spatial about the things we just did, and the, for me the work was all about kind of spatial relations and position, and, uh, and when I think about, you know, so I'm thinking, if I think about the, the sound, wearing the sound, and the way that that intensity moves around the body, and, uh, and, and I don't, like, I'm not, um, I'm not often wearing a piece of jewellery in a, in a traditional sense, uh, but 
you know, when I see other people wearing it, it's a, it's, it really is a spatial relation between this thing and the eyes and, the, you know, or one eye and the other eye and the hand and the stance and the position in, the, in you know, whatever the location is. And, uh, yeah, and I guess conversate, this conversation, experiencing those things reminds me of these spatial relations and in these spatial relations reminds me of a coming together that that the thing that the jewelry doesn't go on the body and then the body and the jewelry make their way around the world as if they're united yeah <laughs> that these things are always in relation to each other and in relation to other mm. things it's mm. a spatial mm. temporal relation mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah thank you i'm just being given the uh the nod <laughs> and the wink that uh oh. we're um our workshop is coming to a close, so um, I'll leave you with that question of what do you think of when I say the word jewellery and take that forth into the world and make some new relations or, you know, <laughs> play, play a little bit more. Mm. Uh, and you're welcome to uh, smoke ring or shadow cast or... Um, sonic necklace for a short while after the event if you didn't get a chance to have a go. Thank you. Thank you all.